Hi, I'm going to show you how to create a new project in Visual Studio. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is, if you have anything open, you can close all of those or you can simply do File, New Project. And you want to make sure you have Visual C++ on the left hand side. You want to do Win32 Console Application and give it a name at the bottom. I'm going to call it Hello World. And make sure you watch as to where it is going. It usually goes into a default folder under Documents, Visual Studio, whatever version you have under the Projects directory. And if you just want to leave it there, that's fine. We'll go look for it later. We can say, and oh, it says a project already exists, so I'm going to call it Hello. And I'm not going to save any changes. If you want to, you should say yes. And here is another important, important step. We're going to go into Application Settings, and you want to make sure you say Empty Project. And make sure it's just Console Application there. And you click Finish. And this should create an empty project which are without any of the other things that we really don't need. So all you should have is four folders, um, and they all should be empty. So then I'm going to create a new file. Under Source Files, you're going to right-click on it. You're going to say Add New, and we're going to create a new source code, which is where our actual code is going to be. So we're going to say CPP file. And under name, I'm going to call it my first program. You can call it whatever you want. And we're going to say add. And there is my editor where I can now start typing code. So the double slash says this is a comment. So this is my first program. Then you come to the next line. And there are a few standard things that we need. For every C++ file, and say include IO stream. This helps us read and write to the console. IO stands for input output. Stream stands for the data stream. So we can read data from the console and write data to the console. Then we have something called using namespace STD. We're going to include that as well. We'll talk about all of that later. Then here's the entry point into our C++ program. Every program enters into a function called main, all lowercase. And this is int, which says this is, and the parentheses says this is a function called main, and it's going to return an int. And we'll, again, talk more about it as we go through. But every code must have this function, which is our entry point. And the curly bracket says the body of the code is going to be right there. So inside the set of curly brackets is my body of the code. So I'm going to say C out. Okay, C out. And C out says console out, which means output to the console, whatever we want to. So literal string inside of double quotes. I'm going to say hello world. Close quotes, so it is going to output hello world. And then again, these less than signs, this is called our stream extraction operator. That's to say output extraction operator. And I'm going to have end L to say put a new line after you output what I have in the double quotes, which is hello world. And then the return zero is again a statement that we have at the end of the code, which says return a zero at the end of the function. So let's see how this works. Build it. You go to the Build menu, and you say Build, and it compiles. It checks for syntax errors. And at the bottom, if you notice, it says, my output window says, 1 succeeded, 0 failed. So now I'm ready to run it. You can go to the Debug menu, and you can do the third menu pick, which is start without debugging, or it also says you can use Control F5. So I'm going to use Control F5. And it runs the code, and notice it says hello world on the screen, just like I have inside my double quote here, with the two exclamations. And the press any key to continue comes automatically from Visual Studio, automatically does that for me. Notice I don't have anything to output that. The end line. Make sure that the press any key to continue goes on the next line. So 
for example, if I don't have that end line, then I don't need the extraction operator as well. The extraction operator only goes between two things. So if you don't have anything, then you don't put the extraction operator. Because if you do, then it says, I don't know what you're talking about. It says expected an expression after that. That's what it's trying to tell you. So we don't need that. So now if you again build, which is the same as F7, F7 will build it for you and control F5 will run it. Notice the press any key to continue is on the same line as opposed to the next line. So when you find some things like this and you wonder, the best way to figure it out is to put it in your code and test it and see the difference. And that's how we learn.